This is the All Anal, All Anal, All Anal, All Anal Podcast with your host, Sebastian Star. Sebastian Star. With your host, Sebastian Star. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the All Anal Podcast. I'm your host, Sebastian Star. And today, I wanted to kind of feed off of an episode that I had done a little while back. So a little while ago, I had done an episode about my theory on musical soulmates. And I used prime examples, uh, Megan Thee Stallion and Baby, as references to this theory of mine. And I also name dropped The Weeknd and Lana Del Rey to kind of set up that example. Um, so feeding off of that, I wanted to talk about another theory of mine in music um, that I'm referring to as the dynamic duo theory. So in... In a similar way that the uh, musical soulmate theory is two artists whose music can kind of come together and make greatness. You know, the, 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 the POV of the main character in the song is attracted to the POV main character of the other song. There's another theory of mine that's a bit more interpersonal. So if you're looking at it from the perspective of you know, the baby and Meg the Stallion, their music is like a match made in heaven. Uh, the same thing for The Weeknd and Lana Del Rey. And then another musical soulmate that I had forgot to mention on that last episode that I think is extremely, extremely relevant would be uh, Childish Gambino and Janae Aiko. So if you listen to, say, Bed Piece by um, Janae Aiko, which is featuring Childish Gambino, it, it synchronizes so beautifully and even though Childish Gambino and Janae Eco don't collaborate as much when they do collaborate it is absolutely amazing every single time so if you take that same logic and apply it to like the best friends who collaborate in music it kind of takes it a bit step uh, another step further and it makes it a bit more personal because this isn't just their music that synchronizes very well it's them on a personal level that synchronizes very, very well. So I have a couple of people who fit this criteria, and I don't think that I'm wrong about this. I think that it's, if you think about it, if you you don't think about it too hard, then it'll be easy to to kind of relate. So a couple of people that I have, I look in my uh, handy-dandy notebook. Um, I have, first on my list, I have Kid Cudi and Travis Scott. Now, if you're familiar with the Scots, which I have mentioned before in previous episodes with my brother when we were doing the Kid Cudi versus Kanye West episode. Um, Travis Scott is one of those artists who takes major, major inspiration from Kid Cudi. And Kid Cudi inspires a lot of artists, so I can't just say it on an inspirational level that the two of them are a dynamic duo, but they just make good music when they come together. But the Scots specifically is like their A1 like they're at the top of their game when they collaborate on that track. Another example of people that I have, which probably is a much better example, would be uh, Jay Z and Kanye West, or Kanye West and Kid Cudi. So, Kid Cudi is really, really good with just pairing up with people and making greatness happen. He just draws off that energy. So, anyone who comes in contact with Kid Cudi in any form or fashion is automatically going to be inspired. They're going to be they're going to be performing at their top notch game. They're going to bring their all. They're going to do everything that they can to show out, show up, and be great. You know. So, Kid Cudi just has that way of pulling the best out of people, but specifically. When you put Kid Cudi and Kanye West, or let's say Kanye West and Jay-Z, if you look at the Watch the Throne album, during that time period, Jay-Z and Kanye West were like thick as thieves, inseparable. They did everything together. You know what I'm saying? They were they were going out to nightclubs and parties and fashion shows and performing together, and they went on tour together. It's a very much brotherly love type of connection. Now, I don't know what their relationship is now. Because I don't keep up with Jay-Z like that. But I do know that during the Watch the Throne era, you cannot find Kanye West without Jay-Z and vice versa. They were very, very close. Very, very good friends. And even during the um, 808s and Heartbreaks era, or even the Kid C Ghost era, you would not find Kid Cudi without Kanye West or Kanye West without Kid Cudi. Like, that's just how close that they were. So not only is their music reflecting their relationship but outside of the music it's like a hey man you want to go get lunch hey man let's do let's do let's just catch up and and chill out you know what I mean let's watch movies like it's a very casual friendship 
Another good example of two artists who do this very well is uh, ASAP Rocky and Tyler the Creator. Now, I mentioned them very, very briefly in the Evolution of Tyler the Creator podcast episode that I had done. And it was really right toward the very, very end of the episode where I had just did a very rough analysis of their song, Potato Salad. Now, not only is that song great, but it brings out the greatness that both of them have. And I've known and I've seen from like old clips and interviews and just, you know, even on social media, ASAP Rocky and Ty the Creator are so close. I've heard Rocky say that in interviews, you know, of course, in the beginning, due to the way that the music industry is set up, you know, the uh, ASAP mob and our future kind of didn't like each other in the very beginning because for one, they're two different regional rappers. You know, ASAP Mob is from New York and Odd Future is from California. So regionally, they have to butt heads because it's kind of like a Tupac and Biggie type of situation, which that's another story for another day. But um, one day they just decided to, to link up and had a conversation and realized that not only did they enjoy each other's company, but they had a lot of things in common with each other. So they really just started hanging out and just doing shit. And it was like, okay, cool. And now ASAP Rocky and the ASAP mob, you know, can hit up Tyler in our future and just chill out. Like you, it wouldn't be the weirdest thing in the world to catch, say, for example, I'm just going to toss two names out there. I'm not even going off of any research photos, none of that. It wouldn't be weird to see, say, ASAP Nast or ASAP Ferg hanging out with like Jasper, Taco, or Lionel or nothing like that. Because that's just how close those two cliques became in a very short amount of time because of Rocky and Tyler. Another really good example, and this is really the foundation of what I want to talk about, is uh, Lil Baby versus Dub Baby. I'm not even calling it a versus, but that's a good example of a dynamic duo. Now, I'm going to be the first to admit, when I heard of both Lil Baby and Dub Baby, I was like, bro, what the fuck is going on? Like, I was so sick and tired of this baby name that every single new artist was carrying. And it was like so, it was like three or four of them that popped up all at the same time. And it's just like, it was overwhelming. It was ridiculous. It didn't make any sense. And I was just like, bro, what the fuck? Whatever. This is whack. I actually took the time to listen to the baby, and I was like, okay, you know, that nigga wordplay pretty cool. He's pretty smooth transitions. His flow is very, very unique. It's very, very wild, but it's not to the point where he's like getting offbeat or he's like just you know going on a tangent. He doesn't talk about anything specifically in every single song that the baby has for himself. He does great features when he's doing a feature. Like the features are really really wonderful actually but when he's just like when it's just him like he he doesn't say <laughs> he doesn't say anything which is there isn't anything wrong with that because he just wants to have a good time and and chill out and and have fun and party and get a little wild and crazy and that's fine that's cool that's perfectly great Lil baby on the other hand is very very personal with his music everything he does is very, very personal, is integrated with this mindset and vendetta that this is the life that I have now versus the life that I was living then. And this life right now, it's hard, it's difficult, it's it's, it's stress and anxiety inducing, it's a bit of a, it's taking a toll on my mental health, but versus what I was doing before, putting my life at risk every day, putting my family's life at risk every day, you know, struggling to, to fight and kill and sell and do all of this shit that I would just regret. I would never look back on it as, you know, yeah, I'd much rather be doing that than doing this right here. Like it's, it's no question. So, and, and, and this is what I had assumed. This is just an assumption of mine. When both of these artists came out because they came they kind of blew up at about the same time they kind of both emerged on the scene in about the same time span you know um naturally I assumed that because and this is a really stupid reason but because their names were so close to each other that they would naturally butt heads because it's like oh you're trying to copy me you trying to do what I do you want to be like me and blah 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 because blah. that's how niggas think but instead of taking that as you know, a form of like a challenge, like, oh, you know, who's going to battle it out, be the number one. They decided to just come together and collaborate and do what they do best side by side. And that is beautiful because when they collaborate and get together, 
they actually make very, very good music. And it's kind of surprising because they're so different, you know, like not even just in their lifestyle choice, but what they choose to talk about is very, very different. And their styles and their way of going about things is very, very different. But one really good collaboration that I heard from the two of them, and they collaborate a lot. They collaborate quite a bit. Um, is the For the Night, which is the original Pop Smoke song, which is featuring both of them. And you can hear it. You can hear it so crystal clearly. Lil Baby comes in first, and his flow is very consistent. He doesn't really change his flow up that much, but what he's saying is so much more relevant and so much more, I'm not going to say important, but it just sounds like he's really digging into himself and, and unraveling these bits and pieces about himself very delicately. He's not diving too deep into his own self, but he's he's making it very personal. Versus the baby, the baby's flow is all over the place, and that's great because his wordplay plays into the complexity of his flow. I don't know too many artists who flow like the baby flows, and that's one of the things that I personally enjoy about listening to his music and his wordplay. Like I said, it it fits into that mold very very well. And one thing that I noticed about the baby specifically, when he's featured on another artist song, like I said, that's when I think he does some of his best work. But when he's featured with another artist, he'll take their name and tie it into his verse somehow. And he does this uh, like almost every single time he uh, collaborates with someone. He did it with Post Malone. The song Enemies with uh, DaBaby and Post Malone, he did it real. And it, it, he snuck it in so cleverly that if you weren't paying attention, you you probably would have missed it. And I just think that it was executed so well. And it's like, how? How do you even think of that? So the line is, um, she looking like she's looking at me like she's surprised. They pack in the post and I'm home alone. When my box hit the door, they go for the 35. So the line is they're packing the post and I'm home alone. So post, obviously, and then home alone. If you smush those, and the way he says it, if you if he says it quick enough, it would just sound like Malone. And it was just like, wow, that was pretty, that was pretty goddamn good. It's like when you play Tic Tac, uh, not Tic Tac Toe, but Connect Four, and then somebody gets a diagonal and you don't see it until like you step back a little bit and you're like, oh, okay, there it is. Um, <laughs> which that was a horrible analogy, but um, that's just, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. So, um, <laughs> and I just think that that was a very, very good way to like feed into that word play. And now I have the before the night lyrics. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm trying to type in and, and read at the same time. So right at the very end of the baby's verse, which is just very, very obvious because he says, like to shoot, light you up, bitch, I'm Rambo, Cuban links full of rocks, it's a choker, rest in peace to the pop, make me smoke you. So it's like very, very, this is right after Pop Smoke had passed away and they had recorded their verses on the song, you know, they're paying their homage to him, which both of them did in their own way. And that's the only line that I'm going to read from that song, just because, just to give you a couple of examples of how he does what he does so well, and he does it very, very well. And I think it's something that I probably haven't even considered before is the fact that the two of them are so well at collaborating. This came to me very, very recently. I was having a conversation. It's like, well, yeah, they really do collaborate a lot, don't don't they? And when they do, it's really, really well. But also off camera, you know, they can just be hanging out with each other. And that's totally normal. So bottom line, long story short, the primary difference, and this is just a theory of mine, between the musical soulmates theory and the dynamic duo theory is the dynamic duo theory. Like, these are actual friends. Like, even if they weren't doing music, even if they were doing something else, they would still be very, very good friends with each other. Versus the musical soulmates theory is kind of just, you know, my songs and your songs really, really like each other. So we're going to set up play dates for our songs to kind of get together and and hang out and go on there. You know what I'm saying? Do their own thing. And, you know, you and me are cool. You and me are cool. You and me can hang out on a personal level and just chill out and do whatever. But it's really our music that loves to be around each other so much. And the dynamic duo theory is like, you know, 
hey man, let's go let's go to the movies. You know, I got tickets to this fashion show. Let's check it out. Oh, uh, I got a I got a new car. You want to go for a test drive? It's shit like that. So it's another real quick short tangent on just some musical theories that I have. Um, I appreciate you for tuning in, sticking around, taking a listen. I, I always appreciate the support. I always appreciate the hype. I always appreciate being able to just say what I'm thinking in a given time frame and have it uh, mean something to somebody. So I appreciate that. Uh, Until next time, I will speak with you a little bit later. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the All Anal, All Anal, All Anal podcast with your host, Sebastian Starr.